Hello everybody and welcome to Dante Arms Tech and I hope you're doing well and staying safe. Today we're going to optimise your gaming and streaming experience within the Nvidia control panel at a driver level. We're talking improved visuals, full optimization for your GPU, increase those sweet sweet frames and hopefully reduce that input lag. The video that I'm showing now is the before and obviously we will do one afterwards so let's not hesitate and jump straight on into it. So first of all you want to go to Nvidia GeForce and now this Nvidia's GeForce drivers which will keep your graphics cards up to date. You want to download the driver, so click on download and obviously keep and run the application. Once it's downloaded it will bring up Nvidia GeForce which also comes with the Nvidia control panel and you want to make sure that you check for updates to make sure you are running the latest driver. Now you've done that we can come out of that and go straight on into the Nvidia control panel. So once Nvidia control panel is loaded up the first thing you'll come to is adjust image settings with preview and you want to use my preference emphasis and select quality and apply. After that we're going to then go on to the manage 3D settings. So the first setting you'll come across in 3D settings is image sharpening. Now if you are able to enable this feature then do so, it will increase the sharpness of your images. First off set sharpen to around 0.50 and then the film grain to somewhere between 0.15 and 0.20. You'll also see GPU scaling here too, unless you're using the custom resolution or strict aspect ratios do turn this on. This especially will be good for entry level GPUs. The benefit of this is being able to play games that have a much lower resolution settings within the menu and upscaling them to the resolution of your monitor. It will also help boost FPS in games. This also works on DX9 through to DX12 and also Vulkan. So up next is ambient occlusion. Now set this to performance and this will give you a more realistic image with less impact on your GPU. Moving on down and leave anastropic filtering on app controlled, anti-aliasing FX AA off, anti-aliasing gamma correction on, anti aliasing mode app controlled, CUDA cores set to all. Now underneath that you come to DSR factors, leave this off for better FPS, however turning this on is for visual effects only. Dynamic super resolution or DSR will enable you to play a game at a higher resolution than your monitor supports. This is also GPU dependent and only for playing single player games. If you turn this on then you can choose how to time zip on your native resolution, either set it to 2 or 4 are generally the best. Underneath that you come to DSR smoothness and you want to set this between 0 and 10. So up next is low latency mode. If your GPU is capable of running 90 frames per second and upwards in most games then turn this on. It will prioritise latency by dropping your queued frames to 1, giving you a much sharper feel of the game and will boost the FPS. So the next tab is max frame rate. Now I would leave this off. If however you want a smoother experience then turn this on and set your FPS to the refresh rate of your monitor. This is now capped at a driver level, meaning games won't pass this FPS. However it will give you a smoother and more stable feel at faster frame times. So up next is multi frame sampled AA or MFAA, leave this off for best FPS. Moving on down you come to open GL rendering. Now set this to the GPU that you have, however if you have two GPUs then set this to the GPU your monitors are connected to. To find that out go to configure SLI, surround, physics and it will tell you which one. Moving on down the list we come to power management mode next. You want this on maximum performance giving the GPU all the power it needs and when it's called upon. After that we come to preferred refresh rate, now if you have this option switch it to the highest available. Moving on down you come to shader cache, leave that on. After that texture filtering anastropic filtering sample on, negative load bios allow, texture filtering quality high performance, texture filtering trilinear optimization on, threaded optimization auto, triple buffering off, vsync off and virtual reality pre-rendered frames set as one. So moving on to the display tab and up first is change resolution. On the right hand side you see the monitors that you have available. Go down to PC and select your native resolution. After that go to the right and select the refresh rate of your monitor. Once that is done go down to apply the following settings and you want to use the Nvidia color settings, desktop color depth set to highest and also output dynamic range to full. So next tab is adjust desktop color settings. Here select the monitor you have games on if you have two or more monitors. Go to choose how color is set and click use Nvidia settings. Go down to apply the following enhancements and adjust digital vibrance to around 80%. The next tab is rotate display. Now if you have a display at vertical you can choose the orientation here. We can skip the view HDCP status and set up digital audio and go to adjust desktop size and position. Here you can choose the scaling. Now I have this set to aspect ratio but you can also choose full screen and have games run at the full resolution as well. So moving on to set up multiple displays next and if you have two or more displays you can configure these in terms of where they are in front of you. However after that go to the video tab and here we're going to go to adjust video color settings and click with the Nvidia settings. Go to the advanced tab, click dynamic range and set full 0 to 255. The adjust video image settings we can now leave as is. Now once you've done all that you want to restart your system to see if the changes have stuck. 
However, we're going to go straight into Modern Warfare and see what it looks like now compared to what it did at the beginning. So there you go, that's how you optimise in video control panel to make your games look a lot better, a lot more vibrant and does boost FPS a little as you can tell from the beginning footage to the end, it makes a world of difference. However if you did like today's video then go ahead and give me a thumbs up, go ahead and leave your thoughts in the comment section down below or if there's anything else you wish to ask me, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click that bell icon on your way out to get more notifications from myself on future videos. I will also be doing an OBS studio setup as well which will utilise the NVIDIA control panel. However that's it all from me today guys and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.